So here's the problem. Um, upgrading to 9.5 axles. So F35 internal splines, which are bigger, so bigger diff, bigger CV, shaft, everything. Um, now I'm left with this 900, 93 outer CV. Um, these have worked great, haven't broken on whatever. So I could just go to a Vigan outer CV, which has the bigger CV, bigger splines that'll mate with the shaft, and then it'll work, work. But the problem is, is I'm not making any less power with this car, and now this is the smallest part on the driveline. So if this snaps, my wheel basically comes off or stands a chance of coming off, because that's what holds the wheel bearing together. So how do I fix this problem? So if you need a bigger outer CV with bigger splines, just use a bigger outer CV with bigger splines, right? I guess. Uh, this is the 9.5 CV that goes with those shafts, so it'll just be a full 9.5 axle shaft in this car. But the problem is, is that doesn't fit in this hub. So this is a 9.5 wheel bearing. This is the hub I was just showing you from the 900, with the smaller splines. So this is the right spline for this outer CV. But the problem is, is this bearing housing hub thingy is a different style. It's a three bolt style. So how do I deal with this? The, the way they make these is basically they press the hub in and then they roll the edge over. So with the heavy press or something. So it's one piece. So the the axle isn't really the primary thing or the outer CV isn't the primary thing holding the hub together. So now it's obvious to see why this is a problem for me. Um, but uh, luckily I like to try stuff. So what I did was I took one of these, I cut this top uh, crimped part off to see if this would come off, but it wouldn't because the bearing underneath it is actually radius. So the crimp follows the radius all the way around. So if you cut this off, completely flush it actually doesn't want to pop out or press out so i ended up cutting one of these completely apart just all the way around and then pulling the ball bearings out one by one just covering the place in dust and then i basically was able to extract the hub so this is that hub so that's a 9.5 hub um this i actually machined down it's actually bigger than this it's uh 48 mil like this diameter here and then it goes to 46 so what I did was since I managed to get this out I had it machined so it'll fit with the 900 wheel bearing and then I popped this in the car and everything with the uh, with the CV and then popped it together put it in the car just to see if it worked with the 95 CV and if it cleared everything and it did so Calling that a success, so it actually fits in the car and then the CV doesn't bind on anything. Actually, I had to cut the ABS ring off to get it to work because it wouldn't clear the knuckle completely. But I don't use ABS sensors on this car at all anyway, so it's fine. So, now we covered that base, but now this is dangerously thin. This had a lot machined off of it to work. This is a uh, inner diameter of the 9.3 wheel bearing is 39 mil. So I machined it from 48 to 39 mil, which is a lot. Um, I don't feel safe running that. And then that's where these come in. Um, these are Timken SET 49 wheel bearings. So you can see these are larger inner diameter. These are actually 42 mil ID. Um, but they're the same height as the 900 wheel bearing. But they're actually two millimeters larger in diameter. So it doesn't actually fit into the hub. So before I get to the hub, um, now I can actually use these wheel bearings and then machine a hub to 42 instead of 39 because they'll give it enough material and then make it work. So another reason uh, this is actually a good upgrade too is these are actually roller bearings. So the uh, I already broke this one because I pressed it out. These are ball bearings in all the factory Euro cars. Basically, this is for noise reasons and fuel efficiency and whatnot. But these uh, roller bearings, even though they have a little bit higher friction, a little bit higher noise, these are actually better for a racing application because of side loading. It's a lot more rigid. You're not relying on like an infinitely small point rolling on the race. You actually have a nice flat surface rolling on the race. It's just like the uh, transmission bearings. 
So that's great. We got a nice strong roller bearing uh, with the same height uh, with an ID that sort of works here. Now we just need more hubs. This right here is an unmachined hub. So I actually bought some brand new ones and then uh, did it a different way. I actually had my machinist um, machine out that crimped spot in it. So I actually had him just face it off and then bore it because now I knew what the bearing ID size is. And then basically I made some press tool out of the old, well, you'll see it in a second. Made a press tool, pressed it out, cut the race off. So now I have good old plain 9.5 wheel bearing hubs. So how the procedure is gonna go is I'm gonna get these machined to 42 millimeters. So this can press right onto it. And then now we have our, our hub and our wheel bearing set and then our axle will fit with it. And then, here's what we have to do. We have to machine the knuckle. So this is gonna be fun. Uh, we're gonna get this fixtured on CNC mill. And then, basically gonna bore it out two millimeters so this fits. And then I did the math. The snap rings will still work on the front side and then the back side won't get touched, that lip. So, we'll be good. So it's a bit of a complicated upgrade, but it's a necessary one because again I had some brake pad knockback which means uh, the rotor is actually moving around because the wheel bearing is flexing from side loading from like you know lateral G basically so it was pushing the pads back and then the pedal would be low every now and then that's why you see me double tapping the brakes all the time so having a, a more sturdy wheel bearing is gonna help a lot in that scenario uh, without actually going to a two-piece rotor or, you know, knockback springs or, you know, all the anti-knockback methods in the book. So I just got to press out this last one and then finish up the drawings and then run these to the machinist. And then basically I have 9.5 hubs that fit a 9.3-900 thingy. So I need you to take in this press fixture real quick. This is the first uh, wheel bearing I cut apart. This is a piece of it. Drilled those holes out. These are cylinder head bolts, same thread pitch as the wheel bearing. And then I'm using that for the, the, the a gear puller to hold on to, to pull this up. So I'm trying to pull the, the actual bearing housing off the hub because that's a machine and that's a, that's a crank pulley washer and then a bolt and then, yeah. It's important to note that these wheel bearings are super cheap now because it's a sob and no one makes sobs anymore. I paid like 50 bucks for this wheel bearing and I'm just taking the hub out of it so it makes sense, right? I don't think you needed to see me cut a bearing race off, but anyway, there's that. It's just a small nick from the angle grinder, but it's fine because it's getting machined. It's not like that matters anyway. Half the cars driving on the road have that. So, beautiful, 9.5 hubs. You can't buy these, you can only extract them from a full wheel bearing assembly. So now, I'm gonna finish my drawings up and I'm just gonna run these over to the machinist. So just like that, these are machined and ready to go. Uh, turned on the lathe. Uh, these rings are actually because, like I said before, uh, these bearings have a huge radius, so it doesn't actually sit on the shoulder. So it needs that ring to sit on, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, pretty easy. Um, the wall thickness is pretty close to the factory one or the 900 one. But it doesn't really matter because the diameter is bigger and then the axle going through is larger and that's what sandwiches it all together. So we are good to go here. Um, now what needs to be done is the knuckles need to come off and then I need to machine those.
I mean, I get it when people say they don't have enough garage space, but come on, guy. You can do it. So here's what the knuckle setup actually looks like on this car. That's an assembled knuckle right there with the spring and everything. And shock, this is the shock removed, so this is just a Bilstein shock that's been shortened and everything. It's got a nut on the ends, so well, you'll see how that attaches in a second. And then top hat, so this is a factory 900 knuckle. And then the reason why I'm doing this wheel bearing conversion is because I don't want to rebuild all of this because I got the geometry right, finally. So, I mean, starting from the bottom, that's a QA1 road racing ball joint so I'm pretty sure that's for like a Cadillac or something something huge the ball stud is massive I had to remount the bottom here to uh, get that to fit right and then basically this is just a chromoly tube with uh, Amco bushings inside of it so there's no actual hang on there's some light so there's no actual shock sleeve in here like a Bilstein sleeve it's all just retained in this one setup and then there's a seal up here at the top to keep grease out Sorry to keep the grease in and debris out. And then, yeah, it's a nice lightweight setup. And then that's a steel coilover sleeve welded onto it. And then a little bit of a secret is this car has anti-Ackerman, if you could see the the angle of the steering arm there. You can only really do that on a, on a Saab, I guess, with this setup because you have to weld the arm on somehow. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty basic knuckle setup. And then, again, you can see the hole at the bottom where the actual shock is retained down there. And yeah, it's nothing nothing crazy, but I don't think anyone's really ever done it this way. But yeah, this is what it takes to get these cars to drive straight with big tires. They don't even want to drive straight without big tires anyway on 15s. So if you see me sawing at the wheel, or if you saw me sawing at the wheel in the finals, that's because my steering rack was loose and it was sliding side to side, so that was my bad. That's enough. Just get a decent pan of it. So of course I gotta do a little quality check though, just to make sure um, the press fit is the right amount of interference. So, about to do that. Looking for a thousandth press fit, that's what the factory wheel bearing uses. It's like a few tenths on the tight side. But that's perfect, because I'm going to heat these up a little bit anyway before I press it in. At this point, you might be asking yourself, if I'm going through all this trouble, why not just put like a 5, five by 114.3 hub or something in this car? That's because I already have 5 by 110 wheels and wheel spacers, so I can't I can't really do that because I'm going to have to buy new wheels. So, there's that. There we have it. Our hub, wheel bearing, and outer CV uh, all sandwiched together. Just tighten the axle nut down to make sure everything was seated completely. And yeah, we are good. And just like that, we have two of them.
So what's left is cut that EBS ring off because I didn't do it yet. Um, put these in the car, bolt everything in, engine in all that, and then I can find out the axle shaft length because I don't know if that's correct or not. And then once it's all good, car drives again. Simple as that. But it's not that simple. I'm going to uh, disclaim that this is for entertainment purposes only. Don't try this stuff if you're not... Well, don't try this stuff, okay? This is for professionals. Peace.